Okay, I'm on the road again. Here we are, uh, part three of uh, being deceived um, to wake up and smell the rapture because it's definitely on the on the. Uh, this is Reverend Gary Emus. Uh, I'm uh, Bread of Life Ministry, and uh, I'm the Watchman on the Tower, looking out for you. Shalom, my brothers and sisters, on this beautiful day that God has given us. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And I want you to know that Happy Thanksgiving to all of you. Uh, out there, remember God loves you. He's still on the throne. He's still going to provide for you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. Philippians 4.19, my God will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Proverbs 3, 1 and 5, just read it. I can go down the list. I can go down the list. I can give you all the scriptures that I want, but we don't have the time. Time, it, uh, you know, Jesus Christ says, worry about today. Don't worry about tomorrow. You know why? Because he's given us 24 solid hours. In that 24-hour period, he's going to give us 60 minutes. In that 60 minutes, he's going to give us time that we're going to be able to break it down and figure out what we want to do. Let me ask you a question. If you die today, do you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? Number one, if you had five seconds left, what would you do? Would everything that has breath praise the Lord? That's what I would do. If you had one minute left, what would you do? I would go out and I would call people on the phone and say, hey, hi, this is brother. Hey, you know, remember me? Well, I'm dying right now and I got one minute left, but I want to let you know about Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If he gave you exactly 30 minutes, how would you do it? I know exactly. I'd go knocking on doors for the last 30 minutes, even if I was in a wheelchair. Even if I couldn't walk, I'd have somebody walk with me. And I would tell people about Christ, what Christ has done in my life, and accept him. If I had one hour left, well, boy, that I could do a lot of great things. I could go out and I could preach a lot of things on Facebook. I could preach. I could preach uh, uh, ten messages on on Facebook. I, I could go and, and, and write a book in an hour on what God's done in my life. See, there's a lot of things that God has given us that we just take advantage of. He gives us beautifully things that we don't understand. We don't want to understand. Why? Why don't we want to understand? What is it that we can't grasp a hold of that God wants to do in our lives? I don't understand. Explain it to me. Explain it to me. Look, Jesus Christ one day will come back. He's going to come back for his church. In a twinkling of an eye, that's like 164 seconds of a second. Boom! It's going to happen. It's like a flash of light. When that happens, if you're here, I'd get out my Bible. I'd read my Bible and I'd head to the Australia. I'd head to the mountains. I'd get as far, far away. Why am I saying these things? Why am I not getting into the Word? Why haven't I got into Revelation 13? I haven't got into Revelation 13 because God is dealing with you right now through me. Through me. Through his vessel. I'm not any different than you. I'm... I'm just filthy rags in his sight. But I have the love of Christ living in me and breathing in me. What do you think I wrote that book, Satira de Sozo? I wrote that book, Satira de Sozo, because that was for you. That wasn't for me. It was a love letter from God for you to find your way to heaven. I wonder how many people in the, in these since 2006, since my book has come out, I wonder how many of you have really read it. My sister read it. She said, she said there's some parts she didn't agree upon, but other than that, she thought it was very well read. My brother never read it. I don't know if my sister's read it. I don't know if my other brother read it. I have no idea, but I know it's in four countries right now. I know other people have read it, and I know it's on, it's on Amazon.com because people are buying it. Used. New, it doesn't matter. They're buying it. So Terra de Soto, Cradle to the Grave. Now, also, I'm going to put a warning out to anybody. I don't care if you make a movie. I don't care if you go and say it. Don't use my catchphrase. It's the phrase God gave me, Cradle to the Grave. And there's a reason why Cradle to the Grave is important. Everybody looks at it, Sean Hannity, and you use it. Not right. You quit using it. It's, it's my catchphrase, okay? If you don't believe me, you can find out. When I had it published, it's published with uh, with the uh, uh, the government. You know, they you have to have it published in Washington D.C. You know, it's published. That name is a catchphrase. Quit using it. 
There's a reason why everybody, you know, a lot of people use phrases they're not supposed to use. There's a lot of things people do in life and they're not supposed to do. Why? Because God ordained that person to say that word. The same thing, are you serious? Look at Paul Bagley. Paul Bagley, I'm pretty sure he's got that copywritten. Nobody can say it. He's got it on his mugs. He's got it on his website. Are you serious? That's his catchphrase. Everybody has a catchphrase. Just because they say I'm on the road again, it doesn't mean I, uh, I'm, uh, I, I, I'm talking about Willie Nelson. I'm on the road again. That's what I do. Now, Willie Nelson, when he did On the Road Again, he did it the way he wanted to do it. But that was his song. I'm not doing his song. I'm just... And if he came up to me and says, Brother, can you not use that? Can you just change it? Sure, I would. I'd change it in a heartbeat. Why? I don't want to get him upset. So, in reference to Willie Nelson, I'm just a watchman on the tower. And if anyone's using the watchman on the tower... Then I'm just um, I'm just a man in the Bible crying out in the wilderness. That's all I am. Make ye way for the coming of the Lord found in the book of Malachi. I'm just quoting something that was written over 2,000 years ago. Well, longer than that probably because of Malachi. 3,000, 2,500, whatever it might be. The most important thing I want to let you guys know is that if you die tonight, where would you go? Is your salvation guaranteed? Christians out there, is your salvation, are, are you following Christ? Well, the Bible says that we're all saved by grace, not through works and no one can boast. So he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he took on all your sins for the past, future, past, present, and future sins. Baptists, they call themselves Baptists, but you're not really Baptists, you're really baptizers. That's all you are. You're not, there's no John the Baptist. If Probably if we really wanted to find his name, we would find his name. Wouldn't we? Catholics, you think Catholicism is something that's new? Started out in 500 B.C., Nimrod, Shamu, and, and Tamu. Nimrod, Nimrod, man that, hmm, Almighty God. But he despised Almighty God. My name, Gary, means great warrior. <laughs> I wonder sometimes why my mother and father named me Gary. I never looked at Wayne too much. Emus means truth, so a great warrior that stands for truth. Maybe Wayne is the sort of his word that cuts between the bone and the marrow. You know, we can look at a lot of things and try to figure out our lives. We don't have that time. We don't have the pleasure. So many people this week are going to go buy cars. Brand new Mercedes. Why? Because they've been advertising on TV. So many people are going to go out and buy new homes. Home that they can go enjoy themselves on the beach. Look at Nicolas Cage. 18 mansions. 18 castles. Bankrupt. 18. His love for wealth is amazing. What does it profit a man, Nicholas, to gain the whole world? Lose your soul. There's a man in a town called Morris, Illinois. You can even look it up. And uh, He was on Libson uh, Road in Morris, Illinois, on your way to Sandwich. It's a strange name, huh? One of the things that's interesting about that is that uh, man built a house. Mansion, beautiful home. Take you there and show it to you. It's beautiful. But the moment the last key was put in the lock, that door, he died. Deuteronomy says that he'll build it, 
but he won't live in it. He'll plant it, but he won't grow it. He won't till it. Are you that way? Have you been that way for the last year, two years, five years, ten years, twenty years, thirty years? If you died tonight, where would you go? Would you go to heaven or would you go to hell? Oh, there's a lot of people in hell. The road, road to heaven is a narrow road, but the road to hell is a wide, wide road. And few do find it. My question to you is, are you willing to take a coin, throw it up in the air? I know it's got heads on one side and it's got tails on the other side, right? But are you willing to flip a coin up in the air and say, Heads, I win. Tails, I'm going to hell. That's not how it works. That's how people have tried to do it in Pilgrim Progress. As he was going down the road, he would run into people that were trying to climb over a gate the sheep's gate. See, the Bible says he knows their voice and he hearkens to it. I'm the way, he says. I'm the truth and I'm the life. No one comes unto the Father except through me. You can't win your way to heaven. can't buy your way to heaven. You can't even flip a coin to get to heaven. It's a heart condition, folks. It's in here. This heart. Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. I stand at the door and knock. See, there's no knob on the door. He knocks on the door inside that door. There's no knob to open that door to get inside your heart. You have to open up the door. Ask, and will be given. Seek, and you will find, and knock. And the door will be open as wide as can be. He says, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a mustard seed. Have you ever opened up a mustard seed? Have you ever spent the time to look at a mustard seed, open the mustard seed and find out inside that mustard seed is 10,000 and 10,000 and 10,000 and 10,000. Seeds. It's the biggest tree in the world. <laughs> wow. So the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. So that means everything must be beautiful because he's constantly producing, reproducing, producing, reproducing. He says, In my father's house. In my father's house is many mansions. He says in his father's house is many mansions. So that means he's going to prepare a place for you. Oh, what a place. We haven't even got into the message. God must really love you because this is number three and we've already spoken 45 minutes about love. Al Sharpton, you got to change your ways. God's love. How can you say you love him, but you hate God, hate his people? You're a liar and the truth's not in you. Jesse Jackson, you know your son has AIDS. You know he does. You know he comes, he has a, he, he's bisexual, he was homosexual, now he's bisexual. You know that too. But yet, you do the same thing and propagate with this rainbow coalition. Rainbow coalition is... Almost like the same thing they do with the AIDS. I wonder where you got that from. Interesting. So many people are spending money while people are, are destroying what God wants in your heart. He wants you to return to him. He wants to come back. This is part three. From the Watchman on the Tower. Or... I'm just a voice crying out in the wilderness. Make you way for the coming of the Lord. Shalom, my brothers and sisters. I'll see you in four.